Hello everyone and welcome to another Top 5 Records video and another one in the series in which I'm taking a closer look at the full discography of the Rolling Stones. And today we have arrived in 1986 with this album, Dirty Work. Now, something odd is happening in the 80s with the Rolling Stones. This album was critically rather unsuccessful. And Keith Richards and Mick Jagger said that it had to do with some problems they had during the 80s. Now, what was going on? During the 70s, Keith Richards was pretty much cr uh, creatively absent because he had a drug habit. And in the 80s, he wanted to get aboard again and he wanted to get more of his blues and country influences in the band. Mick Jagger wanted to make more of dance music and during this period, they were on, on tough terms speaking. Um, it has never been quite clear to what extent these fights were going on. I read the, the biography of Keith Richards, the one he wrote himself, uh, the autobiography, and he is, I don't know, for me it was pretty vague. At least I don't remember him making uh, ridiculous claims but I do remember, for example, watching Live Aid, the 1985 show. I watched it later on on DVD because I wasn't born yet in 1985. But I saw Mick Jagger perform, doing a solo gig. And I saw Keith Richards and Ron Wood uh, playing with Bob Dylan. So what's going on here? Now, you can hear that something is going on on Dirty Work. Because... Most of the times, not all of the band members were together in the same studio. And this is a record that struggles with the creative process. And you can, you can really, really hear it. My personal theory also is that the 80s and the trends and the vibes and the change in the album presentation towards MTV and more hit-based uh, situations also reflected on a lot of classic rock artists. You see that with a lot of the bands. The Who did not make one good album in the 80s. Pink Floyd was struggling in the 80s. The Kinks were struggling in the 80s. And the Rolling Stones were also struggling in the 80s. Even the bands who had somewhat reinvented themselves or artists, for example, Queen and David Bowie, they were also struggling in the 80s and had albums that were really, really flaws. For Queen, it's the miracle. Uh, for David Bowie, it's never let me down. And for me, the Rolling Stones' big flaw in the 80s is this. How do they want to sound? And I think not only do you hear that conflict in the sound, you can see it in this cover as well. This is by far the most horrible cover in my record collection. And I think it's horrible because you can see that they are trying to understand the vibe of the times, the, the colors. But this does not reflect who the Rolling Stones are. And this does not reflect on which area they are powerful. Having said that, listening to the album, I don't think the album is a travesty. It's not as horrible as the things I've said about, for example, Pink Floyd's The Endless River or uh, The Division Bell, which, which I've really found hard to go through this is just boring really boring with one exception uh, there is one song on here it is called had it with you which i really enjoyed but overall it's lacking something how can i address that best i've been listening to all these rolling stones albums with my dog a husky and, uh, well, actually, she's over here. She's lying in the, uh, next to me while I'm doing this review. I'll show her. Say hello to Leila. Le Leila. This is Leila. And Leila and I have been listening to the Rolling Stones, and she is not the kind of dog that is normally really interested in music. But she became a Rolling Stones fan here, because whenever I put on a Rolling Stones album, she'd get straight in front of the speaker, and you noticed her heartbeat would race, her tongue would roll out, and she really ducked the vibe. She really liked the rhythm, the bass, and the, you, you, you know, 
dogs hear it when something is funky or something is rolling. I had it with my other dog as well. My, my, the other dog I had was a funk dog. Whenever the meters were playing or Sly and the Family Stone, she noticed, like, oh, this is funky. And Layla has it with the Rolling Stones. All these albums, you know, when the rhythm's going on, she's going, she's laying down and she's enjoying it. And with this one, she fell asleep. And I had the same thing. I'm seriously experiencing this the same way as my dog. This was just, it's not a horrible album, but it doesn't quite get there. So that's my review. Uh, my, and together with my dog's review. Um, uh, do you agree? Do you disagree? Uh, leave a comment below and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.